Greetings and welcome to Intermediate Algebra, Equations and Inequalities in One Variable, Lesson 2.6, Inequalities Involving Absolute Value. Inequalities involving absolute value add a little bit of complexity to the situation. If it was just x equals 7, we would be able to graph this very easily. But when we're talking about the absolute value of x equals 7, that means x is exactly 7 units from 0. If we have absolute value of a is less than 5, in words that would be a is less than 5 units from, the number, uh, from 0 on the number line. If y is greater than or equal to 4, then that means it's greater than or equal to 4 units from, the no on, from 0 on the number line. And let's actually look at the number line and see how this works. If x, the absolute value of x, equals 7, that means it could be negative 7, because the absolute value of negative 7 is 7, and the absolute value of positive 7 is 7. So it would be both of those points will satisfy that equation. The absolute value of a is less than 5. Well, if the absolute value of a is less than 5, now think about it. It's less than 5 units from 0. The positive side is not bad to understand because 4, 3, 2, 1, those are all less than 5. But the absolute value of negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, that would be the other little tidbit in this range of values. So we, when we have a is, the absolute value of a is less than a number, in essence, the final expression is going to be negative whatever number is less than a is less than whatever number. When we have y, uh, absolute value of y is greater than or equal to 4. Well, let's think about this. If y is 3, that's false. If y is 4, that's true. If y is 5, that's true. So we know it does include 4, and it's everything to the right of it. Where the tricky part comes in is how do we deal with the negative numbers? Well, negative 5. Well, the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. 5 is greater than negative 4. So we know that it's everything to the left of it. So y is less than or equal to negative 4, or y is greater than or equal to 4. Now, I'll try and bring, keep our little cheat sheet up here for a moment, and let's try and graph the solution set. The absolute value of 2x minus 5 is less than 3. That is the second situation. So using this second situation, we know that 2x minus 5 is less than 3. Uh, the absolute value of 2x minus 5 less than 3 must be in the range of negative 3 to 3. So we can rewrite it as negative 3 is less than 2x minus 5 is less than 3. Now we can solve this inequality. We're going to add 5 to each side. We're going to get, sorry for the error, this negative should not be there. We're going to end up getting 2 over 2. Uh, we're going to get, oh, I can't talk right now. All right, add 5 to each side. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. Uh, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. And 3 plus 5 is 8. Divide each side by 2, we get 1 is less than or equal to x is less, no equal, uh, x is less than 4. So again, that negative should not be there, sorry about that. So we have the range in between 1 and 4. No square brackets because there was no equality. All right, let's solve and graph. The absolute value of 3a plus 7 is less than or equal to 4. Less than or equal means that I am blocked in. Less than. So I am in the range between 
negative 4 and positive 4. So I can rewrite my problem as negative 4 is less than or equal to 3a plus 7 is less than or equal to 4. Okay, let's subtract 4 from, uh, subtract 7 from all sides. Subtract 7, subtract 7, subtract 7. Negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. Plus 7 minus 7 is 0. And 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Now we have negative 11 is less than or equal to 3a is less than or equal to negative 3. Divide everybody by 3. And we get negative 11 thirds is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to negative 1. Because it includes, it has equality, they are going to be square brackets. And then everything in the middle. Let's try another problem. The absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than 5. Now it's going to be this type of situation. So negative 3, or x minus 3 is less than negative 5. So here's what I did. I took the value out of the equation, or out of the absolute value markers. I flipped the sign, and now it's a negative 5. So this back end gets change to the opposite of what's ever going on. So it was greater than 5, so it becomes less than negative 5. So x minus 3 is less than negative 5. And then I take one version where it just pops out without the, the absolute values. x minus 3 is greater than 5. And this will work for every one that you do. So the first version is in my mind, that you just remove the absolute value and you work with it. So x minus 3 is greater than 5. The second version I work with is x minus 3 and the opposite of everything else. So it was greater than, then it's going to be less than. Uh, positive 5 becomes negative 5. And I work each of these problems. x minus 3 is less than negative 5. Let's add 3 to both sides. x is less than negative 2. Or x minus 3 is greater than 5, add 3 to both sides, x is greater than 8. No equality, so they are parentheses. And just make sure that you follow the direction of the angles here. And, so let's try it again using that method of flipping the sign and such. So your first problem that you're going to do in this case, it's the absolute value of 4t minus 3 is greater than or equal to 9. You just remove the absolute values, and it becomes 4t minus 3 is greater than or equal to 9. That doesn't change. Now you have to deal with the negative side of it. So remove the absolute value, but this time flip the sign, uh, the, the inequality symbol, as well as the sign on the value. So it becomes 4t minus 3 is less than or equal to negative 9. Everything becomes the opposite there. You solve the problems like you normally would. So 4t minus 3 equal, uh, is less than or equal to negative 9. Let's add 3 to both sides. 4t is less than or equal to negative 6. Divide by 4. Oh, pardon me. Uh, talking too much. T is less than or equal to negative 3 halves. Now, 4t minus 3 is greater than or equal to 9. Add 3 to both sides. 4t is greater than or equal to 12. Divide by 4. t is greater than or equal to 3. And I'll let you look at that graph as to what it's doing. The nice thing about this method of just take the absolute values off and leave it as is, and then take the absolute values off, and then uh, make sure that you change the absolute value to the opposite, change the sign on the number to the opposite. Now let's get that down into writing what I said. So, rewriting absolute value equations and inequalities. 
if C is any positive real number, then each of the following statements on the left is going to be uh, equivalent to the statement on the right. With an absolute value, let's say the absolute value of x equals C. When then, then that means without our absolute value, x could have been negative C or it could have been C. Let's try it again. The absolute value of x is less than C. Well, that means negative c is less than x is less than c. Now, let me reread that. This is the same thing. I wish I had a little pen in here. Maybe I do. All right. This is the same thing as x is less than c and x is greater than negative c. See how I flipped the symbol and flipped the sign? That's exactly this right here. It's just combined into one little area. Okay. Absolute value of x is greater than c. That means, well, x is greater than c or x is less than negative c. And just using bigger things on the inside, the absolute value of ax plus b equals c, well, that's going to be ax plus b equals negative c, or ax plus b equals c. It could be either the negative version of c, or it could be the positive version of c. ax plus b, the absolute value of ax plus b is less than c. Again, that's going to be ax plus b is less than c. That's this part. And ax plus b is greater than negative c. That's this part. The absolute value of ax plus b is greater than c. Well, the original is, well, it's greater than c. <clears throat> and then the second version is you flip the inequality symbol and it's a negative number. <clears throat> All you got to know is the first one comes off as is. The second one, you flip all the symbols, flip the sign of the answer. Let me walk you through an equation. The absolute value of 2x plus 3 plus 4 is less than 9. The first thing we need to do is isolate the absolute value. So I'm going to remove this plus 4 by subtracting 4 to both sides, and I get the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than Next step, we want to rewrite without the absolute value. Now, the less than is the and, but remember, you can do it this way where it just comes off without the absolute values. That's this part. And the second one is flip the sign and make it a negative. That's this side of it. <clears throat> so let's solve it. Subtract 3 from all sides. We get negative 8 is less than 2x is less than 2. Divide by 2. We get negative 4 is less than x is less than 1. The nice thing about setting it up with one big grouping is that graphing it becomes pretty, I think is become more blatant, more um, in your face that x is in between these two points because it's monkey in the middle here. And therefore, if it's monkey in the middle, it's got to be monkey in the middle on the graph. Let's solve and graph. The absolute value of 4 minus 2t is greater than 2. The first thing we're going to do is make it just equal. Just remove the absolute value. So we get 4 minus 2t is greater than 2. And then the second way of writing it is we're going to do the opposite. The only thing that's changing on the opposite is the right hand side. 4 minus 2t is less than negative 2. Solve each of these individually. So subtract 4, subtract 4, negative t, two, uh, negative 2t is greater than negative 2. 
Now you gotta remember your inequality rules. If I am dividing by a negative, I have to flip the sign. Negative 2t divided by negative 2 is now going to be uh, negative 2 divided by negative 2. It's going to be t is less than 1. When we work the opposite side, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. I get negative 2t is less than negative 6. Again, by dividing by this negative number, I have to flip the symbol. I get t is greater than 3. And now we graph it. Does not include 1, so it is a rounded parenthesis. And everything less than that. 3 is not included. And we graph to the right. All right, sometimes they like to throw in a curveball to you. Let's take the absolute value of 7y minus 1 is less than a negative 2. Now you've got to stop and say, can an absolute value ever yield a negative number? The answer is no. It always comes out positive. So in this case, since it can't yield a negative number, the answer is an empty set. You can either do the two brackets with nothing inside it or this zero with the slash through it. It doesn't exist. There's no solution that will ever yield a negative absolute value. Let's try another one. The absolute value of 6x plus 2 is greater than negative 5. Well, it doesn't matter if it's greater than negative 5. It will never be this negative for the same reason as above. It can never yield a negative number. But, I mean, technically, I suppose technically, every number is going to yield a positive, right? So it always is going to be greater than 5. So I'm going to, I'm going to redact my reasoning here. I don't believe this is true because I can plug in <clears throat> any number with x. This is going to be positive and a positive is always greater than negative 5. So I'm thinking it's all real numbers. I have to double check on that, but I'm thinking all real numbers. I'm not too sure why I wrote that. Let's solve and graph the absolute value of 2 minus 1 half x is greater than 1. First of all, it's greater than 1, so that's okay. First term is just removing the absolute value. The second equation, inequality, is going to be the opposite. So right now it's, it's greater than, it's going to become less than, it's 1, it's going to be a negative 1. Working through these problems, subtract negative 2, subtra or, uh, subtract 2, subtract 2, and then you're going to solve this Remember, you're dividing by an, or multiplying by a negative number. You're going to flip the sign. X is less than 2. Working on the opposites. Again, just be very careful that when you multiply by this negative 2, that you flip the sign. So X is greater than 6. No equality here, so rounded and off to the right rounded and off to the left. All right, let's write the negative of absolute, oh, negative 1 is less than or equal to x minus 5 is less than or equal to 1. We want to write it as a single inequality involving absolute values. Well, let's rewrite it separately first x minus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 1. x minus 5 is less than or equal to 1. If you have two opposites like this, right, the inequality is opposite, and the number are opposites, then you can write it as an absolute value. The absolute value of x minus 5, and you take the one that is positive, less than or equal to 1. Because the right-hand side 
including our inequality symbol, were opposites, we can write it as an absolute value. Let's walk through one more problem. The absolute value of 2x minus 1 fifth is less than 0 0.3. Because I have fractions and I have decimals, I'm going to go ahead and change either all of them to fractions or all of them to decimals. The 0 0.3 is not a nice fraction to work with. It would be 3 over 10. But 1 fifth is kind of a nice fraction. That's 0.2. So I'll go ahead and change the uh, 1 over 5 to 0.2. All right. 2x minus 0 0.2. Now let's take the equivalent of that without the absolute value. So just drop the absolute value. You get 2x minus 0 0.2 is less than 0 0.3. I'm going to go ahead and solve this really quickly. Add 0.2 to both sides. You get 2x is less than 0 0.5. Now, 0 0.5, I'm going to go ahead and deal with it as a fraction. I could leave it as uh, a decimal, but I'm going to try and be a little clever here when working with my numbers. 2x is less than 1 half. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. Multiply 1 half to both sides, I get x is less than 1 fourth. So I'm done with just dropping the absolute cell value, or the absolute cell markers. Now I have to deal with the opposite. So I'm going to drop the absolute cell value markers. I'm going to flip the inequality sign. I'm going to take the opposite of my value, and I get 2x minus 0 0.2 is greater than negative 0 0.3. Add 0 0.2 to both sides, you get a 2x is greater than 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is 1 tenth. So I'm going to go ahead and change it over to a fraction. 2x is greater than 1 tenth. Multiply both sides by 1 half, so x is greater than 1 twentieth. Because x is greater than 1 20th, but is less than 1 4th, you can write it in this compound inequality. All right, and if it doesn't want me to do that, I won't. All right, uh, that is it for this lecture. Until next time, be seeing you.